Welcome to Central Truth, a ministry of Hearts Inc. In this podcast, Pastor Dixon will be preaching on the second church in the book of Revelation, the Church of Smyrna. This is the third sermon of part two, The Confronter. It is also the sixth message in the exposition of the book. It is mistakenly believed that Christians should not suffer persecution, but on the contrary, sometimes persecution and hardship is part of the experience for humility, testing and growth. This message to the church puts the health and wealth prosperity gospel to rest. As we will see, this church was one of two churches Christ had no condemnation for. Today, as we speak, there are many Christians all over the world who are persecuted for Christ's sake, but we are to pray for them. The riches of the church of Smyrna was not material, but spiritual. Before we go into the word, please remember to like, subscribe, and tell a friend about our YouTube channel. Now turn into your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2, verse 8, and let us go into the word with Pastor Dixon. This morning, as we continue, as we go through the book of the Revelation, And we are going through chapter 2 to chapter 3, dealing with the seven churches of the book of Revelation. These seven churches are the churches to which the book was written to directly. And we know in chapter 1, we dealt with the encounter when John received that revelation from Jesus Christ, his experience when the Lord appeared to him. Now we are in chapter 2, the confronter where God is confronting his church and he is saying some things to his church and we looked already at the first church the church of Ephesus which is the loveless church it does not mean that they did not have any love They lost their first love, so they love less. Their love was less than when they started. And God had to pull them up and encourage them to get back to their first love. Now we are here at the church of Smona, the church of Smona. Well, Smona means bitter from myrrh, bitter. And as we go through this church, we are going to see why it is called um, bitter, or let me put it this way, why the city is called bitter, but not only that, why the people in this church of Smyrna also reflect the bitterness of the city 
The people in the church of Simona were good people. But they were facing bitter times. Times were hard and times were bitter. Even though Simona was a rich city, it was one of the independent city. When I said one of the independent city, one of the most well-to-do cities of Rome at the time. It was a province of Ionia in Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey today. And of all the churches, this is one that that city is still in existence today, which is known as Itzma in modern Turkey. The modern name today is Itzma. Now, Smyrna was located northeast of Ephesus. The city participated in what we call, that was mentioned in the church of Ephesus, emperor cult worship, which was introduced in BC 23 on the emperor Tiberius. So they worship the emperor. And today we are no different emperor worship. We could use a synonym that will match it today in application in today's time. The worship government. There was a large Jewish congregation which was permitted to try to thrive because it was recognized. But the Jews were very hostile to Christians. Let me say this. The Jews from the very outset were the number one persecutors of the church. Even to this day, the Jews hate Christianity because they see it as a blasphemous religion that elevate Jesus Christ as God and they do not want any of it. So the Jews in that city and not only in that city, in other cities if you read the book of Acts you will see we are at different time the church had to run or the church were under heavy persecution or when Paul and go into a city um, his first encounter was always to the Jews but then he suffered or the churches in that those cities suffered heavily from the Jews so they had political pressure, emperor worship, government, and they had religious pressure, the Jews, Judaism versus Christianity. But the Jews had a free pass and they were allowed to worship without persecution, whereas the church was heavily persecuted. Now, as we go in to the text, we will see something here very interesting. Chapter 2, verse 8, this is where we're going to pick up. It says, and unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write. These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. 
Now let's pause there. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. And as we look into your word, Lord, we pray for guidance. We pray for insight. We pray for understanding. And dear Lord, we thank you for your mercies and your grace towards us, especially those of us who live in living in the West. Particularly here in the Caribbean, when we are not we are, we are not facing political persecutions as Christians and also religious persecution. But there are many Christians scattered across the world. When we think of those, especially in the 1040 window, who are under religious persecution from various farms. We think those in China. We think of those in North Korea. We think of those in India, Buddhism and I mean Hinduism and we think of those in the Islamic bloc, all those stands, the Pakistans, the Afghanistans and even in Iran and Iraq and all these Middle Eastern countries, even Christians were suffering from the hand of the Jews. Lord, and wherever they might be, even in Africa, North Africa, and the Muslims is penetrating in Africa. We think of Boko Haram and all these places. We come before you today and help us, Lord, to think about them because it could be us soon. So here, as we look at this text, the Bible said, In verse 8, and unto the angel of the church of Smona, write, These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Now it is critical and crucial why the Lord Jesus Christ chose these words of encouragement to the church of Smyrna. Now let me say this, the church of Smyrna is one of the churches that you, you're not going to see any negative complaint or condemnation from the Lord. The first and the last Jesus Christ here is speaking. In chapter 1 he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, which is the first and the last. The beginning and the ending. Let me put it this way. God, Christ, has no beginning. He has no ending. In other words, it's just an idiom of expression to say I am eternal I was there from whenever there was no beginning and when there was no ending I created all things or in other words you could say it I am the God who was there from the beginning of this creation of the world and I am the God who is going to be there at the end of this age that we are living in. So when we think of this term 
the God, the first and the last. In other words, again, the word first could also be interpreted as preeminent. It's not talking about the first thing or the last thing. The first mean first in rank he is the chief, he is the, 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 the top. As we say in our culture, the ace boom come, the number one, the first, the top dog of all creation. And he's the last. In other words, he will have the first say in all decisions and he will have the last say in all decisions. So, as we look at this text, it's crucial. What God is saying to the church of Simona, who is about to face some bitter I mean, persecution, or at the time we're going through some bitter persecution, God is saying, look, I know how it starts and I know how it's going to end. Trust me. In other words, God is trying to assure them, have confidence in me. I know it all. I see it before it happens and I see it at the end. So have confidence. What you're going through, I'm in control. I understand it. I see it all. I know it all. And then he said, which was dead and alive. God, well not God, let me say this. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, God did not die. The human Christ died, but the deity of God live on forever. God cannot die. <laughs> if God had to die, everybody in this world would cease to exist. Everything will just um obliterate into nothingness um i'm a fan of the um the avengers and them kind of movies and you know when thanos or when iron and snap the finger with the the the, 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 the iron goblet people just cease to exist so it is if god has to die the entire world will just obliterate because in him we, loop, we move and have our, our being and in him all things consist so if he die everything will just vanish so the humanity of God that is the one who die not the deity of God because God cannot die So Christ is saying, in my humanity, I understand what death is all about. I understand what pain is all about. I understand what persecution is all about. Yes, you are going through that. I understand it because I was, I died, I suffered death. But yet the thing about it, I not only experienced all of this, but I conquered it. So the one who has the first say, the one who has the last say, the one who experiences what suffering in all, is all about and die from it, but it did not end there, had the power to rise again from the dead. It was crucial for this introduction. And the point, bring me to that point, that point, the declaration, the message to the angel of the church, the messenger of the church, the angelus of the church, or it could be the pastor of the church from Christ. And God is saying, I know the identification with suffering. That's point one. God knows what you're going through, church. All of us were here, whatever we are going through, God knows it all. Good time, bad time, hard times. 
But this message is to the persecuted church. Remember in Matthew chapter 24, turn to Matthew chapter 24, and we are going to look at a few verses. Let's look at verse 6 to 8. Jesus speaking. Matthew chapter 24, Jesus here speaking. And he is telling his disciples they came to him after Jesus Christ was in Jerusalem and he rebuked the scribes and the Pharisees and he was coming out of the city, went to the Mount of Olives and then his disciples, you know, so Jesus look at that beautiful temple and Jesus Christ replied, look, all these stones you see, they will be crum crumbled down and, and, and so on. And, but when they reach the Mount of Olives, they ask him, so when shall these things be? The end time. And Jesus said, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquake in diverse places. And these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Some people say, well, this is, a tribula this is not the tribulation as yet. Further on, as you go down, we're going to see. Look at the pronouns, the language. You, he was talking directly to his disciples who are there. Verse 9, then, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And so we are seeing right here, Jesus Christ is talking about the church age from the beginning of the church. When we read the book of Acts, Jesus Christ was already up in, ascended into heaven. He here speaking to his disciples. He tell them go into all the world, preach the gospel. But in doing so, it will not come with an easy price. It will come with a cost. That's why Jesus Christ said, If you are truly my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. Now here it is, it's persecution. And Jesus is telling the church, Because of my name, when you go out and preach the gospel, you'll be hated. You'll be ridiculed, you'll be mocked, you'll be despised. Some of you will be even be persecuted. As I said, we see the early church and the various emperors from, well, a lot of them were persecuted from the Jews, different cities went, they went to. They were persecuted from different emperors um, during the early Roman times. The church, I, I mean, when we think of Nero, who was Caragula and he, um, he changed his name to Nero. And the Domitian persecution where John was banished to um, Patmos. And go, go through. They had various persecutions. Some churches suffered severely. And this is at the end. The, the first century of the church was not completed as yet. John was still alive. The apostolic age. And here is a church in the city of Simona was facing heavy persecution. So let's go back to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 8. It said, I know 
thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan so God knows the affliction so the identification with suffering I know God identified with the suffering of the church he said look remember the Jews did the same to me they were my chief menaces while I was on the earth even these those people I tried to reach it was by their hands I was sentenced to, to death crucified and here it is crucified by Rome handed over by the Jews but here it is again punished by Rome because these early ch church brother, the brothers and sisters refused to worship the Emperor they refused to say Caesar is Lord and because of that in those days when you refuse to worship the Emperor it was a severe crime you could be persecuted or everything that you have could be confiscated from you so but they had works Christ said in spite of all this this church stood the test of time they did not buckle they did not bow that's why this church was one of the only church apart from the church of Philadelphia that God did not have anything bad to say about this church to the suffering they stood and God said they were faithful their works were they were faithful to tribulation harsh tribulation a double portion from Rome and from the Jews Sobering words to think about as we just listened to the persecution the church of Smyrna endured but they did not flinch or run from it. How many of us who profess Christ can stand to such affliction like the church of Smyrna faced? I hope that this two-part message will cause us here in the Caribbean to be gracious to God for affording us the peace we have in our societies and the freedoms we have to worship Him. I also pray that difficult times may not come our way, but if they do, I pray that He will grant us the strength to take a stand during those difficult times. Before you leave, if you have not already done so, please subscribe and like, tell a friend about our YouTube channel. Please tune in this weekend for part two of this message. Also, be sure to tune in to The Main Point, a short podcast dealing with theological issues facing the church from a Caribbean context. Until next time, may the Lord's blessings be with you.